City Hunter is one of the most infamous examples of what otherwise might be a forgettable mid-range film, despite the presence of an internationally popular movie star, being propelled to pop culture immortality by the inclusion of one single scene. In this case, a fight sequence that features martial arts superstar Jackie Chan and several other actors morphing into live-action incarnations of characters from the Street Fighter 2 arcade game and engaging in an extended fight sequence mimicking the video game physics and sound effects. If you enjoy Jackie Chan or Street Fighter, you've probably seen at least that part of this movie. And if not, it looks like this. For obvious reasons, the scene has become memetically popular on the web and has turned City Hunter itself from just one more Jackie Chan movie from his ultra-prolific early 90s run of Hong Kong action comedies to a bona fide cult classic, largely because the scene actually gets funnier, with the added context of the film surrounding it having nothing to do with Street Fighter, video games in general, and having no other scenes with the same tone. But it has eclipsed the fact that City Hunter is a unique and bizarre entry in Chan's filmography in its own right, and an intriguing snapshot of Hong Kong pop culture in the years just prior to the nation's historic transfer of sovereignty from British rule to Chinese. Though produced in Hong Kong in 1993, City Hunter is meant to take place in Japan, as the film is actually a loose adaptation of the popular 1980s Japanese manga and anime franchise of the same name by Tsukasa Hojo. For those unfamiliar with the material, which is huge in Japan and had an enormously popular following in Hong Kong at the time, Chan has the title role as Ryo Saiba, the City Hunter, a carefree, girl-chasing, jack-of-all-trades private investigator whose more serious-minded and overall better-skilled partner and best friend Hideyuki Makamura was killed years earlier. The basic dramatic setup of the broader City Hunter franchise is that with his last breath, Makamura makes Ryo promise that he'll keep an eye on his younger sister Kaori, and also that he'll never seduce her, i.e. don't treat her the way Ryo treats literally every other woman he comes into contact with. Ryo resolves to keep his vow even as Kaori grows up into a beauty, played by Joey Wong, who, complicating matters, has herself fallen in love with the oblivious Ryo and goes to great lengths to sabotage his relationships with other women. Oh, you remember? In the film proper, Ryo and Kaori are conscripted to find the runaway daughter of a wealthy businessman played by Japanese actress and idol singer Kimiko Goto, which, after extended slapstick chase scenes that comprise the relatively small amount of city hunting we actually see the city hunter do in the film, quickly leads to all three sneaking onto a luxury casino cruise ship headed out to sea. Unfortunately, said cruise ship has also been infiltrated by a gang of heavily armed terrorists led by Hong Kong villainous Westerner mainstays Richard Norton in the Hans Gruber part and Gary Daniels as his sidekick enforcer who becomes Ken during the Street Fighter scene, who plan to hold the wealthy passengers hostage and have themselves been secretly pursued onto the ship by Ching Mi Yao as policewoman Psycho Nagomi and her partner played by Carol Wong. So yeah, it's a comedy diehard on a boat with Jackie Chan. There are certainly worse setups, and since City Hunter was fast-tracked into life as a producing, writing, and directing project by notorious Hong Kong crowd pleaser Wong Jing, it more or less careens from one big stunt fight or physical comedy sequence to the next, only ever slowing down when it absolutely needs to in order to squeeze in a dance sequence, some verbal humor, or gratuitous shots of beautiful women wearing not much clothing. Like most Wong Jing productions, it pretty much goes back and forth between whatever tone a scene requires, going from a violent action, to light comedy, to melodrama, to some deeply unfortunate homophobic comedy based around Ryo's disappointed assumption that the two policewomen maybe, maybe not are a couple. <laughs> and an awkward attempt to seduce one of the terrorists who happens to be gay, both of which have aged very, very poorly. Apart from the Street Fighter scene, there's not necessarily a lot that would go in the pantheon of Chan's all-time greats, but there's still so much elaborate stunt work, fights, weapons, and pyrotechnics that it's hard to imagine how they did any of it without everyone involved almost killing themselves. And then you remember it's a 90s Hong Kong movie, so the answer probably is everyone almost did kill themselves. It's also a different sort of role for Chan, who's said to have been a late-in-the-game replacement for a different actor, possibly Stephen Chow, whose career Wong Jing had just begun to help launch at the time, you don't often get to see Chan playing a lead character who, despite being the hero, is kind of a shady, sleazy asshole. <gasps> Jackie Chan himself is famously not very fond of the movie, but if your main exposure to Hong Kong films of this era have largely been limited to stuff that was aiming for mainstream global appeal like Chan's better-known movies or the early John Woo cycle, City Hunter can serve, for better or worse, as a fascinating microcosm of what Hong Kong audiences specifically were demanding out of a domestic blockbuster at the time. Of the rest of the cast, Goto and Wong acquit themselves nicely and both do a solid job of keeping up with Jackie in the comedy scenes, and it's immediately apparent why Ching Mi Yao was one of Hong Kong's top popular film actresses of the early 90s, appearing here barely over a year out from her star-making turn in Wong Jing's infamous Category 3 camp class
classic naked killer. And of course, martial arts fans have long lamented that Gary Daniels never quite caught on as a mainstream action star since he really does have compelling screen presence. These days, he's probably still best known for a henchman role in the first Expendables movie and for playing Kenshiro in the live-action Fist of the North Star. You City Hunter is no classic, but it's an entertaining action comedy and an interesting pop culture relic even beyond its most famous individual scene. For a long time it was somewhat hard to come by in the West, but about five years back Shout Factory put it on a two-pack Blu-ray with Chan's mostly forgotten first American produced film Battle Creek Brawl. So if you're a Jackie Chan completist or just a fan of kung fu comedy, it's absolutely worth checking out and watching. City Hunter is a real gem. Yeah! Hey gang, here's a question that keeps coming up. If your handle is Movie Bob, where are your movie reviews? Well, my old reviews are in a lot of places. You'll find many of them on my YouTube channel, but you'll find the brand new ones on Geek.com, an awesome site that's also your one-stop news source for science, TV, gaming, technology, nerd culture, the works. You can find all my reviews directly by going to Geek.com slash author slash B Chipman, because that's my real name, and you can get regular updates on all my reviews and all of Geek.com's other great content by signing up for their kick-ass newsletter at subscribe.geek.com. And don't forget to also subscribe to the Geek.com YouTube channel, where you'll find the videos that accompany my reviews and tons of other great content, too. Remember, that's Geek.com, the Geek.com newsletter, and Geek.com on YouTube. Make sure you don't miss out on all the latest MovieBob reviews. You can also check out my own new website, MovieBob Central, where you'll find my blog, links to all my work, and shop for my books, ebooks, and future MovieBob products. And please remember to like these videos, share them with all of your friends, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching another MovieBob production.